Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Space News Pod, a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden, and on this episode, we're going to be talking about the Artemis 1 mission and why it's being postponed. You see, on September 3rd, 2022, the rocket was supposed to launch. They had a launch window between 217 and 417, two hours to launch this rocket. Now, Earlier on in the morning, they started to tank up the rocket, meaning that they were fueling up the rocket for the flight. But they found a few things that were a little bit off and they had to postpone the launch. And here's what we know so far. This giant moon rocket was waved off due to a liquid hydrogen leak. Now we have to remember that the space shuttle also went back to the vehicle assembly building 20 times and that's possible for this rocket as well. So it's on the pad right now, pad 39B. And if this leak can't be fixed at the pad, they're gonna move this gigantic 322 foot tall rocket back to the vehicle assembly building and take a look at what the problem was and fix it there and then move it back out to the pad again. And NASA will not launch until everything is exactly right. Safety is always first for these types of flights. NASA will not launch in this period, meaning there will be no launch before Tuesday of next week. That would be the 6th of September. There's no launch before then. As soon as NASA could launch, no earlier than September 19th, 2022. NASA will also ensure that they will not overlap with the Crew-5 launch that's going to the International Space Station on a Falcon 9 rocket. And the next two launch window periods will be September 19th through October 4th. That's excluding September 29th through the 30th and October 17th through the 31st. This launch was waved off due to a liquid hydrogen leak. Prior to loading, the line that had the leak was inadvertently overpressurized to about 60 pounds per square inch. It should have been 20 pounds per square inch, which could have caused this major leak for the SLS rocket. But it's too early to tell before they actually do any investigation on this leak. The leak in question was not nearly what it was on Monday, but they still had a small and existent leak before the launch. The vehicle has been safed, which means it's been drained of all fuel. And to fix this leak, teams plan to fully replace the soft goods within the line. Rolling back to the vehicle assembly building will depend upon discussions with the range to get an extension for the launch of the Artemis 1 mission. And teams will follow up next week after considering options with the schedule going forward. NASA teams are also looking at the chill down procedure to see if additional precautions can be added. But sources close to the situation say that a rollback to the vehicle assembly building is very likely. And we will probably not see a launch of the Artemis 1 rocket until October. Hey, real quick, if you subscribe to this channel and also like the video, YouTube will pick up on that and they'll start recommending you other space flight content such as NASA, SpaceX, rocket launches, live streams, all the things that you enjoy, YouTube will see that and put you in the algorithm. So if you could real quick hit the subscribe button and the like button, it's going to help me out a little bit, but it'll help you out a lot more. Thank you. So I want to share with you a few more things directly from NASA about the uh, upcoming events for the Artemis 1 mission. And here's from the NASA blog directly. Over the next several days, teams will establish access to the area of the leak at launch pad 39B and in parallel, conduct a schedule assessment to provide additional data that will inform a decision on whether to perform work to replace the seal either at the pad where it can be tested under cryogenic conditions or inside the vehicle assembly building. So that's what I was saying before. Are they gonna be moving it back to the VAB? And sources say probably that's the best option at this point. So this is this goes into more of the flight of the rocket as opposed to the uh, the fixes that need to be done to meet the requirement by the Eastern Range for the certification of the flight termination system. So the flight termination system is something that they put on every rocket in case something goes wrong. Say if something in an engine goes bad and they're like, we can't risk it. So the flight termination system basically blows up the rocket. 
So they're trying to get certification for another amount of days. Currently set at 25 days, NASA will need to roll the rocket and spacecraft back to the VAB before the next launch attempt to reset the system's batteries. The flight termination system is required on all rockets to protect public safety. And then they go into a little bit more detail about the launch attempt from the other day. Uh, engineers saw a leak in a cavity between the ground side and rocket side plates surrounding an 8-inch line used to fill and drain liquid hydrogen from the SLS rocket. Three attempts at reseeding the seal were unsuccessful, while in an early phase of hydrogen loading, operations called chill down when launch controllers cool down the lines and propulsion system prior to flowing super cold liquid through uh, liquid hydrogen into the rocket's tank at minus 240 or 423 degrees Fahrenheit. Inadvertent command was sent to temporarily raise the pressure in the system. While the rocket remains safe, and it is too early to tell whether the bump in pressurization contributed to the cause of the leaky seal, engineers are examining the issue right now. And because of complex orbital mechanics involving its launching to the moon, NASA would have had to launch Artemis 1 by Tuesday, September 6th as part of the current launch period. And now there's launch windows. And I'm going to show you these launch windows as well. The launch availability. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Um, but here we go. So for September um, 19th through October 4th, so we have until September 6th, there's 12 launch opportunities there. September 19th through October 4th, 14 launch opportunities. So they may just hold off for a little bit to launch this thing because there's more launch opportunities, but there's no availability the 29th and the 30th of September. October 17th through the 31st, there's 11 opportunities to launch this thing. None during the 24th, 25th, 26th, and 28th, though. And then November uh, 12th through November 27th, there are also 12 launch opportunities. December 9th through December 23rd, 11 launch opportunities. So they have a lot of area here to work with. They have a lot of time to work with to launch this rocket. Now, if it doesn't launch right away, that's fine. Like we were saying earlier on, the space shuttle... It was sent back to the vehicle assembly building 20 times. And that's totally normal for a rocket. This is a test rocket, by the way. So the test rocket needs to be tested. And it can be tested on the pad. And it will also be tested during the flight. But these things happen. This is an experimental rocket. It's okay if these things happen. NASA builds these systems in place to go back to the vehicle assembly building and fix the problems. They put that in the schedule for a reason. And this is why they have so many launch opportunities between August and December of 2022. Now, I want to say thanks to everybody who's been listening and watching to the show. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you 100%. You're amazing. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. And if you've been here for a while, thanks for staying around. I do appreciate it. We're almost at 90,000 subscribers. If you could hit the subscribe button and the like button, I'd really appreciate it. It really would. It would help a lot. Helps you more than me, of course. But, you know, it does help a little bit. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great day. And I'll see you next time on the Space News Pod. How do I stop?